Hello everybody, uh, my name is Sasha Zavanovic. I'm the CEO of Nextologies Limited. We're uh, based in Toronto, Ontario, Canada, actually a little suburb north of Toronto called uh, Markham. Uh, I'll be presenting to you today something called to cloud or not to cloud, and cliche, that is our question. Should I be moving to the cloud? Should I mo modernize my infrastructure? Should I spend all this money? These are the great questions that we find is uh, coming to us as a, as a provider, as a hybrid provider. We provide cloud services, but you can still connect infrastructure into our cloud. Uh, but we are end-to-end -end solutions, a little bit different than your traditional operator that you'd see at the show. Um, don't get me wrong, what you hear today and what I'll be talking about, it's not anti-cloud, don't get me wrong. If you started your business or you're a fast channel or you started something in the cloud and you can afford to stay in the cloud, stay there. Don't change it, it's great. But if you're coming from a legacy workflow where you require some form of infrastructure, last I checked, there's no, hey, I can plug in this SDI into the cloud. It just doesn't happen and it won't happen. That's why you have the new standards, 2110, so you can just IP workflows. But let's understand where money is made in the cloud not necessarily the servers, but it's inf infrastructure costs. You're paying for it one way or another. So as you go into new formats, there's going to be more costs. So um, you need to plan a transition or change everything and just start new. So Nextology sits in there as that transition. We're that hybrid in between two spots. We're in, you can still connect infrastructure, as I said, and you can still do your traditional cloud stuff. You can still connect into legacy operators if you're a legacy television provider going into cable operators or you're uh, going to fast, uh, fast platforms. We, we, in essence, handle that for you. So, first thing to take in consideration is, you know, if you're reducing your dependency on a single facility, right? That's why we're going to the cloud. Essentially, we want to, hey, I don't want to pay for brick and mortar anymore. I want to go up to the cloud, redundancy, resiliency, that's our initial thought process. You know, you think you're going to free your growth. You maybe ran out of infrastructure. You're like, oh, okay, I have no more room. I'm not going to invest in, you know, get a new facility or more racks. I'm going to go to the cloud. But when you do that, you know, are you really being building agnostic? Are you actually achieving anything by moving to the cloud? So if you go to the cloud, your entire operation is at the mercy of the provider. Let's understand that. Every provider, not just you know, AWS outage or Google outage, even we have outages, there's problems will happen. So if they go down, you will go down. So who do you blame? There's no 1-800 you know, yell at this cloud provider. They don't care. You don't pay your bill, they shut you down. It's different when you have a hybrid solution, like an operator, like your traditional operator that built this business, it's a little bit different. I'll skip this one for a moment. So even if you hire a third party to handle this for you, when you go to the cloud, do you have the IT department to handle that for you? Do you have the people who know how to use it? Do you, <laughs> I, I, I don't want to go too technical, and we were talking about this earlier today. You know, some people don't even understand the concept of trying to SSH or get into your cloud to manage it. Again, not bad, but you need to hire people to do that. You hire people to do that, they cost money. This comes with certifications, CCIE certifications, network certifications, those certifications exist so that they get paid more money. Hang on, I thought I was going there to save money or I thought I was going there to do more with what I had. So that's a consideration you have to put into your head when you're thinking about going into the cloud. Costs, what are the real costs to get in and out of the cloud? The providers have amazing deals. Come on in, it's free. Yeah, free in, no problem, no cost. But what does it cost to get out? So I mentioned earlier about new formats, 2110, it's amazing, it's heavy. So now you're not going to run that in and out of your cloud, so now you need more types of compression. Now you have to, in, you have to expand your compression workflow. JPEG XS, some form of HEVC, H.264, different variants, you got to compress your signal more to reduce your cost on bandwidth. Clients tend to come to us because it's too expensive to set up another instance. So we have clients who come to us who are um, have primary play out in the cloud. They might, they might have backup play out in another cloud or in the same cloud, but they need a DR. Because you know, we, they have outages, what's the DR? So when you start doing the math to do a DR, provide, the DR play out or DR solution, it ends up costing you the same that you had or more than your legacy infrastructure if you had that. So you need to think about 
what other alternatives there are out there. So companies like, our, like ourselves and many others that are out there can facilitate, facilitate that for you. So consider your DR. So if you're going to move to the cloud, great, but your backup plan. What are you going to do when they inevitably will have a problem? We all do, not they, we all have problems. So split that, bifurcate that, that, uh, that risk. Why is the cloud so expensive? I've touched that on that a little bit. So some providers charge you extensive for egress. We've seen some providers give you free server capacity and everything you need, but the egress costs are an arm and a leg. Just one movie, if you look, talk about your legacy flow, not new stuff, we're talking about stuff that already exists. One movie easily can be 40 gigabytes. Talk about 40 gigabytes that you now need to transfer that, maybe you want to send that to another location, maybe you're sending that to get to, to another provider, just to get that to that other provider, even if, if, if they're in that, if they exist in the same cloud infrastructure, it doesn't cost you anything. But if you're trying to get it out, even back to your own network, because you want to do something with it, it costs you a lot of money, it will cost you a lot of money. So the legacy broadcast world, you got these large files, and from our experiences, you, there's a constant need to move them, you always have to be doing something. So you got your server costs that you'd be paying, plus you have your capacity costs. You start adding all this up, you have the exact same situation when you had your own brick and mortar, plus more expenses, more people, more training, more dependency on the IT people, I love them, not enough training to support, we need more training to teach them how to handle this like, like, we, have, we, like we had with the broadcast industry. We have you know, uh, truck engineers to uh, uh, data center engineers who are able to learn on the fly, which that doesn't exist at the moment. Right now you need to be certified for this and certified for that. We don't have those capabilities within, within today's world. So it'll come, but it's not there yet. So as I mentioned, hybrid solution. We take our clients' existing hardware, in some cases, and put it in our data center. Perfect example, Numeris. If anyone has a Numeris box or a, um, uh, or a Nielsen box, so in Canada it's called Numeris, and in, in, uh, in the US it's a Nielsen box. Up until recently, there was no IP mechanism to insert the Nielsen code into your signal if you were doing some form of uh, uh, the tracking on your channel or your feed, if you have a linear feed coming out of the cloud. You still need to do that in baseband, SDI in, SDI out. You can't do that in a regular cloud infrastructure. So you need some form of hybrid to get you there. And that hybrid, company like us, you have the ability to put a batch of hardware that you're still paying off, because you spent hundreds of thousands of dollars building your infrastructure, what do you do? Well, you take a portion of that and move it into us. So we, we provide that co-location is, is, is what, what it's referred to. So, flexibility and service. Unless you're in the top 5% of content creators or channel owners, you're not going to be able to get a cross-connect or a physical connection in with any of these major cloud providers. And the reason that's important, the Nextology's existing business today was legacy, traditional fiber delivery to MSOs and MVPDs all across North America. Some of them have a connection with these cloud providers. That's fine, that's great. But a lot of them, a majority of them, don't. So you're not going to get that cross-connect, which these legacy players still want, so you still need an intermediary. You still need to land it somewhere and deliver it. But hang on, I thought we were trying to reduce costs. We're not reducing costs, you're just increasing the complexity by going to the cloud. So, right now, your only option to get your signal out of the cloud using Zixi, RIST, SRT, technologies like ours, TXR, and Nextologies. All of these are additional costs. So you need to consider when you're moving to the cloud, understand what you have is, am I really saving money by moving to the cloud? Last I checked, when you call that your, your IT guy, you know, my, oh, my email's not working, the IT guy will hand it and handle it in the morning. Nothing against IT guys, I'm that IT guy, but when your problem in the cloud, you're going to call your IT guy, what, five o'clock in the morning, he's going to wake up and solve that problem for you? No, so you need some form of traditional broadcast infrastructure to keep your signal or feeds on air. And again, I'm not, not talking about VOD or fast or MRSS feeds and all that stuff, which is easy. I'm talking about live linear television as we know it today, traditional cable box infrastructure and you know, OTT streaming, I'll throw that in there as well. Do the math, <clears throat> do the math. 
what does it cost you to rent a strong enough instant from a major, major cloud provider? What does that mean, a strong enough instance? You need to do some transcoding, you need to do some processing, you need to rent a server or an application that handles that for you. You start doing the math on what that box, or what that monthly fee is, by month four, you probably could have bought that box yourself. Month five would have probably paid all your bandwidth costs potentially for the year. I'm just throwing some easy numbers out there. So you're building your infrastructure in the cloud, but you're spending more money because you're inevitably putting it in their pockets. If you're going to go cloud, choose the right partner. Know what you need. So if you're in the VOD world, I think the cloud is great. It handles it perfectly. If you're in the live world, make sure that live partner knows how to handle live, has the infrastructure to handle your live. It's extremely important because great technology up there, but there's no infrastructure. Remember, you're going to the cloud to get away from your own infrastructure, to go into somebody else's infrastructure. Hang on a second, what am I paying for? I'm paying you for some software. I'm paying you per megabit per month for some software to go, go out to the internet. If the model works for you and you're making money, great. If you have infrastructure, do more with your infrastructure. And I, I wish there was a Q&A session, session here and I'd ask a question. AWS, which is great, I have nothing wrong with them, exists today because a bookstore kept crashing on, 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 uh, on Black Friday. And somebody said to Jeff or whoever it was, said, hey, we can't have this go down anymore, what do we got to do? Well, we got to spend a bajillion dollars to build this infrastructure. Oh wow, that's great, we spent all this money, but just to prevent the website from going down on Black Friday? Well, yeah, well, what else, what else can we do with it? And I'm glad I'm, today, you know, even though I don't use AWS or clouds, I'm just using AWS as an example, some genius said, hey, you know what? We could rent this stuff out while we're not when we don't need it. So think about that statement for a moment. They built infrastructure to satisfy their business. All this extra capacity, they sell it to other people. Well, anyone in the room have their own infrastructure? You got your own infrastructure, why aren't you making money with it? Well, it's not my business? Well, it wasn't their business. So, not anti-cloud, don't get me wrong, I support it. But build your infrastructure to support your business and do more with it, don't just let it sit there. Go hybrid. Use a company in between that allows you to still maybe downsize your infrastructure, still allows you maybe move some of your gear into a co-located co -co co cloud and get you into a flexible world that you can still support legacy. And that's the big thing. You spool up an instance in any of those cloud providers and then DirecTV, Dish Network, somebody calls you, say, hey, I want your channel, and you're scratching your head. I'm like, okay, can I send you an SRT? They're like, what's SRT? You'd be shocked. Those head ends are not going to take a Zixi, that may take Zixi, uh, SRT, any of these new links. It's changing, don't get me wrong. The world is changing, it's getting better. But you need it now. You can't wait for them to change. So you still need that hybrid solution. You still need to get on a private fiber network somewhere to get to an end provider. So, last of that is, you must have a partner who's agnostic and flexible. I'm not the only one, there's other providers out there that can do it for you. I talked on 2110 already a little bit earlier, so I won't bore you too much on that. Great technology, too early. Can't afford it. Majority of, the, majority of our clients will never move to 2110. They're still paying off their SDI workflows from five years ago. That won't change for a while. We're a good five years plus out. And who knows if there's going to be another new technology by then. So ask yourself whether or not cloud boils down to these three essential questions. What do you need to be most successful? Can cloud truly deliver these things? And if the answer is yes, at what cost? Can I make a business of this? This is the biggest one right here. Never underestimate that there will come a time you, you will need to talk to someone. There is no 1-800 AWS. There's no 1-800 Google, Azure, et cetera. You need to talk to someone. It's your IT department that's going to handle that, but while they're sleeping, who's going to fix it? You need someone in between. So you might as well park it with a hybrid operator. And there we go. Very short to the point, sorry guys, a little parch here, first time up on a stage in over two and a half years. And if anyone has any questions or challenges, I'd love to challenge anyone, not challenge, have a great debate over a drink over at our booth. Come on over to our booth, we can talk about 
why we believe hybrid is the way to go until there's enough technology, enough capacity to be entirely in the cloud and we support it, there's a middle ground, come to Nextologies. Thank you very much.